One in four medicines coming from our high street chemists originate in rainforest plants. Over 2,000 rainforest plants have been identified with the potential to fight cancer. Indians in northwest Amazonia alone use over 1,300 different rainforest plants of medicines. Rainforest plants are so medicinally useful because they contain powerful toxins to deter insects and animals from eating them. Medicines are made from minute doses of these poisons. When they fall ill, forest Indians seek the advice of a shaman or Indian healer. Shamans believe that when we are ill, there is something wrong with our spirit, and to diagnose a cure, they must enter the spirit kingdom. They do this with the aid of powerful hallucinogenic drugs like the bark from the Shiwawaku tree. This tree is revered as being quite magical, and is in fact called teacher tree. During our stay, Mark contracted shingles, which is a painful rash related to chickenpox. Once the rash has appeared, there is little you can do other than take painkillers. But luckily we knew someone who could treat him with rainforest plants. The first treatment was a shaman practice called purification by fire, where methylated spirits were set alight on Mark's chest. Unripe cashew nuts were then crushed to release a powerful prussic acid which dried out the sores. Peanuts were then mashed to make an ointment, in fact making peanut butter, which had a very curative effect. And finally the healing resin from the kapaba tree was administered. The rash disappeared in two weeks. The seed from this flower are used as an aphrodisiac. Kanya Kanya, the sap from this plant, is used to relieve fevers. This woman uses the plant she is holding as an effective contraceptive. By using such plants, Indians deliberately keep their population to a level their forest home can support. The Indians' hunter-gatherer lifestyle has remained unchanged for centuries, yet they are the only people on earth who can live in a totally self-sufficient manner, in harmony with the environment which supports them. By contrast, modern man, who has theoretically progressed to become more and more civilised, can only maintain his lifestyle at the direct expense of the environment. Modern life is not only responsible for the chronic ill health of the global environment, but also for increased ill health experience on a personal level. What wonderful thing is it that we are buying that can possibly justify paying such a high price? It seems we have a lot to learn from the Amazon Indians, if only to realise that we are sacrificing the natural environment to create for ourselves a more comfortable life in an artificial environment, which is in fact far less rewarding and fascinating than the natural one we are destroying. Indians have been using medicinal plants for centuries, but only recently has Western science taken their claims seriously. Indians in Madagascar have been using the rosy periwinkle for numerous different cures, and when at last Western science examined the plant, they found it contained no less than 60 useful medicinal alkaloids. Two of these, vincristin and vinblastin, have so revolutionised the treatment of Hodgkin's disease and leukaemia that now many more patients have a chance to survive. Curare, used by the rarest Indians as an arrow-tip poison, works by paralysing the muscles. Today, curare derivatives are used in modern surgery to relax the skeletal muscles. Quinine is still the most effective treatment for malaria. It comes from the bark of a South American tree. And steroids from the wild Mexican yam we used to make the oral contraceptive pill. It is doubtful whether we would have these today if it wasn't for this one plant. As well as medicines, rainforests provide many other seemingly wonder products. For instance, a palm tree in Brazil produces an oil so similar to diesel that a truck will run on it. Imagine in the future pulling up to a palm tree instead of a petrol pump. A wild strain of coffee has been discovered to be entirely free of caffeine. And another plant provides a harmless, calorie-free substance 300 times sweeter than sugar. These examples alone illustrate the tremendous potential of rainforest plants. Yet so far, only 1% of species have been examined for use by man. With its innumerable species, rainforests are a massive storehouse of genetic information, with many more miracle cures and products waiting to be discovered to help us in future generations. It is essential that this untapped library of information is not destroyed, nor the people who know their way around this complex library. 
It would take us hundreds of years to find out what they already know. These are the forest Indians, who have passed their knowledge of plants from one generation to the next by word of mouth. Unfortunately, Western influence has interfered with this process. Indians are adopting Western habits and Western medicine, and the chain of ancient knowledge is being broken. And because it has never been written down, it is in danger of being lost forever. The loss of traditional knowledge has not only greatly diminished the cultural identity of forest peoples, but has also made them suffer health-wise. They can no longer practice traditional medicine, yet cannot afford the Western alternative. As a result, health in the local communities has deteriorated. So a project called the Metra 2001 has been set up on Tambapata Reserve to reintroduce the use of traditional medicine and teach the basics of Western healthcare. A Metra 2001 is run entirely by indigenous people, by a small group of S.A. Eta Indians who live on the reserve. Representatives from different communities gather at a Metra to learn about the use of forest plants as medicines. How to identify these plants in the wild, grow them in medicinal gardens, and prepare and administer the medicines they provide. This plant is important in the practice of shamanism. One tree which grows locally is of great importance in maintaining the health of these people. These are Oche fig trees, whose sap is used as a medicine to treat internal parasites, which due to poor hygiene infest the majority of people here. The medicinal sap is extracted by cutting a thin strip of bark. The white sap runs down the groove and drips into a container, in a similar way to tapping rubber. One treatment with Oche sap will protect someone from internal parasites for up to a year. Ametra has not only dramatically improved the general health of local people, but has also been vital for conservation, raising awareness about the value of rainforest trees and plants, so that instead of regarding the forest as an obstacle to be cleared for agriculture, they now see it as a valuable resource in its own right, providing important medicines. Experiments are also being made into sustainable agroforestry, where some trees are felled and the wood used for building. But the larger trees are left standing to protect the soil and the crops from the sun and the rain. Instead of burning, the brush is left to decompose naturally, which is the forest's own way of recycling nutrients. Crops will then be grown on a tier system, imitating the structure of the forest, and many species together also imitating the forest and minimising problems caused by pests. As well as this important conservation work, Tambapata is a base for scientific research. For instance, Michel Alexiades is a botanist who is making an inventory of the plants and trees of Tambapata, collecting specimens and sending them for analysis to New York and Lima universities. Because, relatively speaking, so little work has been done studying forest species, it is not unusual for Michel to find plants which have never been named. Michel likes to work closely with the local people, who seem to know far more about the plants than qualified Western botanists. Until recently, Tambapata was under threat from land developers like cattle ranchers, timber merchants and gold miners. This prompted some naturalists who had worked on the reserve like myself to set up the Tambapata Reserve Society, or TREES, to raise money and awareness to promote the conservation of the Tambapata area. TREES supports a metro another educational work in the nearby town of Puerto Maldonado, and sponsors Peruvian students from the desert-bound city of Lima to do research on the reserve. It is hoped that by educating and involving the local people in conservation projects, that the rainforest may have a chance of being preserved by those same people. For many years, Trees has been campaigning with Peruvian conservation groups to expand the reserve to a more viable size. It was felt that the biodiversity of the region alone justified this. In January 1990, the authorities at last agreed to expand the reserve from 5,500 hectares to 1.5 million hectares to form the Tambapatu Candama Reserve, which is now only slightly smaller than the famous Manu National Park further to the north. This is an exciting victory for the rainforest of Peru. Tambapata with its unique blend of controlled tourism, education, research and conservation, may be described as a model reserve 
whose success may influence the setting up of new reserves throughout the Amazon region. Around the world, groups like Friends of the Earth and the Worldwide Fund for Nature are campaigning for the preservation of rainforests, lobbying governments and financial institutions to consider the environmental impact of the development they finance. The Worldwide Fund for Nature sponsors important research and rainforest reserves around the world. Friends of the Earth are campaigning for banks to cancel third world debt, which they feel is holding rainforests to ransom, and also to boycott timber, which does not come from a sustainable source. If you are concerned, you can help this campaign by refusing to buy products made from tropical hardwoods. Indian legend says that the trees hold up the sky and if they are cut down, there will be a catastrophe. In the words of Paikan, who led the Kaipo Indians to gather at Altamira to protest against the building of dams which would destroy the forest homelands. We are fighting to defend the forest because the forest is what makes us and what makes our hearts go. Without the forest, our hearts will stop and we will die. Today, everyone wants to make money out of the Amazon, and we are scared. Scared by the burning that is taking place, by the destruction that is taking place, by the pollution. I speak as a person who has lived all his life in the forest. We have decided we are not going to leave our land, we are going to stay there, and if it comes to it, we shall die there. We are simply trying to save the knowledge that the forest and this planet are alive, and to give it back to you who have lost the way.